Hey, did you like that intro? All right, time to get into this review of half of chapter three. I would do the whole, all of chapter three, but let me just say that this chapter has the most amount of very uh, important information. Now, maybe someone read chapter three, like, oh, I don't remember what happened, you know, what, what makes it important, I remember, you know, whatever. Well, let me, I'll make sure to tell you all these very important details that you definitely don't want to miss, so stay tuned. Um, a quick recap, basically, she gets picked for the Hunger Games, and then she, well, actually, she volunteered, whatever, and then she goes, she has an hour to say goodbye to her loved ones, she sees her mom, Prim, Mage, uh, the father of the other person that got picked, which his name is Peta, and he's a baker. Uh, some other, and then she hugs Gail. Um, that was the last person she saw. And then she gets on a train to go to the capital. All right, that's basically all that happened in this chapter. Now let me get into the juicy details. So, <sighs> I gotta start off with Katniss. Only because when I take notes, Katniss is, you know, the first thing on my notes. And I think it's been working so far. And, you know, I figured if I just get the worst thing about this book out of the way, then we can just move on and we can be happy and we can all sit here and enjoy this review. You know, you can make yourself some popcorn. And, okay, this is, this is you know, you know matter of fact, I would suggest skipping this part about Katniss because it's painful me painful for me to even read my notes about her. So, let me just start with something decent about her. She does have that never give up attitude. It says that she, you know, she wouldn't go down without a fight, you know, even if, you know, her odds were against her. Um, so yeah, that's, you know, pretty decent. Let me go into why, you know, let me just say, when I first started this video, um, or when I first started doing this, I kind of started seeing that, you know, uh, Katniss was sort of a crazy girl, you know, she, tr you know, the whole drowning a cat, which isn't just killing cat, you're literally drowning it, you know, that's a little intense, and I, at first I was like, oh, oh, that's weird, and, and then it started to get more and more clear that she's actually a little bit more crazier and cold-blooded, and now, you know, before I was kind of like, oh yeah, she's a sociopath, whatever, but I, I was kind of half kidding, I am literally telling you now that she absolutely is a sociopath, Let me, uh, and you know what, I'm gonna give you three reasons, now hold your horses. Don't. I know you're you're probably a huge fanboy or girl about this character, but you know, you just calm down. I want you to calm down. Are you serious, face yet? All right, good. All right, let me give you my first reason. This is a quotation. Um, I guess Gail was saying, you know, oh, you can kill. Uh, she was like, or he was like, yeah, you know, you can kill people or something like that. And she was like, you know, the awful thing is, is that if I can forget their people, it will be no different at all. And she was talking about, like, no different at all from killing animals. So she would totally be okay with killing people. And not just people. Children. Okay? Children. So if you don't think, you know, a sociopath would kill a child, like, you think, oh, no, a sociopath, that doesn't make... You kill a child, you're not a sociopath. Okay. All right. Um, but that's not all here, obviously. She's actually like, oh, yeah, I can just forget their people and, you know, kind of block that out and just kill them. And treat them as animals. So hey, you know what? You don't think that makes her a sociopath? Okay, that's fine. The second reason is even better. Um, I guess when they were on the train, uh, she try she master emotions and whatnot. That's a, that's not a big deal. But uh, Peta, on the other hand, was basically bawling. He was crying his eyes out, and he wasn't even trying to hide it. And then when she looks at it, she's like, hmm, that's interesting. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And this is what she concludes in her head, that it must be his strategy to cry, to appear weak in the Hunger Games, and later, you know, come out on top or something. Okay, really, Katniss? Even if that was somehow true, like you should at least have the other possibility in your head, the obvious possibility that, holy shit, this guy just realized he's going to die, and he's going to be you know, killed and murdered, and he's going to be, you know, abandoned, he's known by his side, he's just going to get killed, maybe that, you know, maybe that kind of, you know, affected him a little bit, you know, I know Katniss, I, I mean, I know you're like, you know, totally a sociopath and you have no feelings, but, you know, not everyone is going to react the same way you do in the world, believe it or not, it's crazy, so... I just think I find it hysterical that, you know, she doesn't acknowledge that maybe he's crying because, you know, he's sad. But no, it's his strategy. 
okay, I don't know. If, even if that was true, for her to just think that right away, you know, I don't know. So anyway, so, okay, let's say, you know, you're thinking, well, that's just how she was raised. All right, I'll give you that. All right. Well, how about this third reason? Can you can you refute this? And this is a quotation. And she, in the context is she was talking about, um, you know, how, you know, the truth of the rebellion and what might have happened and shit. And she was like, whatever the truth is, I don't see how it'll help me get food on the table. I've already said this before. I already said that, you know, she really cares about food and food's like the number one priority in her life. You know, there's only two categories of people, people who are mouths to feed and people who get in the way of her getting food. So this kind of just takes the cake. I mean, she's completely blinding herself from reality because it doesn't help her get food. And, 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 like that's like her one condition like hmm should I care about this hmm does it give me food that's like the one question she asked to understand like for her to care like hmm I do like Gail because he gives me food hmm oh my mom she doesn't give me food I don't like her um hmm the truth does it give me food no it doesn't no I can't see how it gives me food so no I don't care for it oh what venting out my feelings and caring about people Pfft, that doesn't give me food that scares off game so she is a sociopath. I want you to accept it. I know it's hard. You know, I'll wait for you to get serious face. You know, you know. I want you to just, just take it in. You know, just take it in. She's crazy. You have to accept that. Okay. So, anyway, moving on. Uh, I I learned that she has an interesting habit of rubbing velvet to kind of calm down, and I can totally see a scene in the future where she's like rubbing velvet, and you know, she's like got to do something crazy in the Hunger Games and that's how, you know, she finds Velvet in the Hunger Games or somewhere and all that shit. And I, I, could, I could totally see that happening. You know, I I always think that there's always a purpose behind everything that's said, so that could be one thing. Um, So, oh, there's so much I want to talk about, but I'll leave that for part two. Okay, so, basically, that's all I'm going to do about Katniss. I know there actually wasn't a lot. So let's move on to Prim. I learned that she, yeah, I didn't, really learned this way i figured she really sucks at hunting apparently katniss tried to show prim how to hunt um i guess when they went hunting prim actually wanted to save an animal that she was that was killed or whatever you know she was like oh no we can save this animal so it kind of shows that you know at least prim has some sense of you know feelings and shit you know at least that's there um so I learned that actually the mother of Katniss may have abandoned Prim. So, and like just left, I guess, one day. So that actually is kind of bad. Um, but it's, it's okay. It's okay, mother of Katniss. You went through a lot. You know, that's the only, the only thing I know how to refer to you by. There's no name given for her. Anyway, so let's move on. Um, so while Katniss was saying her goodbyes, Gail was like, yo, give me a bear hug. And she's like, all right, dog. And, um, she was like, oh, don't let them starve, lol. And then he was like, I won't, dog. Lol, remember? Dot, 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 dot. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just literally what my notes say. That's how I remember these things. But I guess, I guess apparently, um, you know, Gail made some kind of promise with Katniss, and I can only assume maybe it's something like, I definitely won't let them starve. We made that promise one day. Remember I promised or something like that? But I don't know. Maybe maybe it's significant. Maybe it's very obvious. Maybe it's just stupid. No one cares. I'll probably never hear from Gail again. Probably. So anyway, moving on. Um, Do-do-do-do-do. Okay, so Mage, whenever she met Katniss, um she actually said uh, that she cares about well she didn't say that she cares about Katniss but she kind of gave her a kiss on the cheek and gave her a golden pin to remind her of where, you know, where she comes from and I thought it was really nice you know while Katniss was kind of like you know whatever about her she kind of defended her kind of whatever you know she actually was like hey you know I don't know I think that was pretty pretty nice of her and the golden pin is actually very significant I'll definitely get into that in the next video <sighs> Okay, now this might actually be quicker than I expected. So now let me get into possibly, actually, I'd say so far, if everything is true that we know about them, 
then he is definitely my favorite character in this book. And there's a few reasons why he, I think he's actually the best character in this book. And the, the main reasons are, I'll give them, but the reasons I personally like him is that he's, you know, he's a very honest person. It seems like he's true to who he is. You know, like I said earlier, you know, he uh, was crying on the train, you know, and he wasn't, he wasn't afraid, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't masking his emotions or anything. He wasn't afraid to hide his tear. He was, he was totally just like, you know, actually whatever, you know, it, that's like a very honest feature. You know, he's not worrying about other people's, you know, thoughts and changing his own feelings for them. You know, he's just, I like that. And, you know, I think I should note, uh, foreshadow things. I mean, clearly I think PETA and Katniss are going to get together. And the reason why I say that is because, you know, he is very much the yin to yet Katniss's yang. You know, if you think about it, while she was on the one side of the train sitting there thinking about, you know, oh, I'm going to have to kill him and, you know, oh, I got to mask my emotions. He was actually just crying his eyes out, you know, not caring more and just like being sad. So I think that would be an awesome scene to see if they did that in the movie. Like it shows her like all like whatever. And she, he, he, she just looks over and sees him just crying. You know, that's, that, I think that'd be a pretty powerful scene. And also I think that, uh, you know, if you think about it on stage when Katniss was, you know, up there with him, you know, while Katniss was like, oh, man, I got to sit his throat, whatever, maybe someone will take him out before I have to. You know, he, he was actually going like, you know, what? I see that she's sad. Let me go ahead and hold her hand and let her know that's OK. Everything's going to be OK and reassure her. You know, that that's like, wow, you know, they're totally opposite. And like, they, like I said, you know, opposites attract. So I definitely think they're going to get together or at least, you know, he likes her. And I definitely think that he may change her, and maybe he might be changed by her, which would be unfortunate. But you know what? It could happen. So I definitely think that you know this character is definitely one of my favorites overall. He's definitely he would he does things that pretty much exactly what I would do in his in the situation. And I don't know, I like that. I like how he's he kind of has the same background as me as well. So anyway, I uh, really like this character. You know, I, I know I hate on fangirls of Katniss. But, you know, at least I have, you know, good traits and good qualities in my character. Anyway, I'm going to stop now. Okay, so don't judge me, you know, just because I like him so much doesn't mean I, you know, have a wallpaper on my desktop. I mean, it's not like that. I promise. Don't think that. Why would you assume that? Okay, I'm just going to move on. Yes, just move on. Move on. Okay. All right. <laughs> So I learned that um, there's really no transportation in District 12. There's no cars and shit. Well, I mean, that's kind of obvious. I mean, I didn't really expect there to be. Uh, and I learned that District 12 was actually built in modern day. Uh, um, what was it again? It wasn't a, it was some kind of mountains. I can't remember. The, it was like the... Oh, I can't remember. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I forget. Uh, okay, so anyway, I also learned that there's a lot of, like I said before, there's a lot of significance around the mines, and now it's becoming more and more clear that the mines are much more significant than, you know, some kind of tr trade, um, and the coal they get there. Uh, so apparently in the past, you know, they used to dig for coal a lot, and I was, I wonder why exactly did they dig for coal so much? And why are they doing that now? What exactly is the purpose for them to like really want coal? Because, you know, if you think about it, what is coal used for? You know, I was trying to think of things that it's used for, you know, maybe on the grill, you know, you know, okay. I don't think there's any grills in District 12. I definitely don't think there's any grills. Maybe, you know, there's definitely no trains and shit for coal and you know what? Maybe whatever. I can't. I'm trying to think what exactly coal would be used for besides maybe for fire and stuff. So I'm curious to why there's they want so much coal and why it's so significant and why they're bringing it into the capital. So I really want to know. Maybe it powers their ships or something, some kind of form of power. I can imagine, but it's interesting. I, I definitely think there's some significance there, and I think that anyone that reads this should definitely pay attention to that on their way through and try and catch any details you can about the coal. Um, and, and not only that, it's even taught in school. Like, coal is like their main subject and how to, and everything about it. So I think that there's definitely more than that that we don't know. And it's not just like, oh yeah, it's like corn today. It's, you know. 
Anyway. So, anyway. Um, so, let me get into some foreshadowing. I mean, I already kind of said this about the coal. And it's a quotation. It's like, you know, oh, yeah, in school we always talk about what we owe in the capital. And we don't, we're never, there's probably an actual account of what happened in the rebellion. Like, there's something that happened. You know, because I always wonder, like, what exactly happened, like I said earlier, like in one of my earlier videos, that, you know, what happened in the rebellion. But some, for some reason, they're keeping it secret. And I'm wondering why. And I don't think there's any reason to, especially, it's like, oh, yeah, we just killed them. We just took out our guns, shot them. You know, there must be something else that they're not telling us. Maybe you know, there is no capital or something, or, you know, I don't, I mean, obviously there probably is a capital, but I don't know, you know, like, you know, it's gonna be something really crazy, so, you know, some M. Night Shyamalan shit, um, so, and here's the thing I don't understand about the capital and the government, you know, basically the government is pretty much raping and bending over every other district, so I don't understand why they don't just keep you know, could having more power because, you know, if you think about it, they could totally get rid of education. What are they going to do about it? Saves them money. They could get rid of community homes. Saves them money. I do suppose, actually, you know what? I just learned this now. The reason why that the government doesn't, you know, get rid of all this education about coal and all this stuff is because they they need coal, and that's exactly why they keep it in. That's exact. I bet you the education, it's real purpose is just just to give people um learn about coal and how to you know get it. I guarantee you that's the purpose and that's exactly why there's an education system. I, I wouldn't doubt it. If anybody has read this, you know, if you, I mean I don't want you to tell me about it anyway. Not that you can. Actually you can just just talking to the, the TV or whatever you use. I guess a monitor. <laughs> Who uses a monitor if anyway. Um yeah, so that's interesting. So that that could be why they don't really have too much control because they actually need these districts to give them coal or whatever it may be. So, okay. And hold on, I want to talk about where, where are the, what other countries are there besides Panama. So maybe that coal could somehow contribute to making some kind of weapon to take out other countries maybe? I'm not sure. I, we haven't learned about any other countries. So, I mean, I haven't. Not we. There's no one else in here. Or is there? Um. So, and then I learned that it's also, I guess... Another law in the government is that you're not allowed to travel between districts unless it's like for some kind of official thing, you know, like tr transporting coal. But here's the purpose, I think, behind the reason why you're not allowed to travel between districts. First, the obvious is kind of make it difficult to communicate and have a revolution with other districts. But the most important, that it keeps that constant hate and ignorance between districts. And it, it obviously separate, separates them. And more and more, the government has it becomes even stronger because the more and more the districts kind of become separated and hate each other and compete over each other, the government just sits back and makes money off of them, you know. So that's a very interesting system. It's very good for them. Uh, so and then I learned that the train that goes to the capital um, goes 250 miles per hour, and this is just a little fun fact that. I guess the fastest train today goes 581 kilometers per hour. And if you don't know what that is, that's like 361 miles per hour. That's where I typed it into Google. So, and it's actually kind of interesting. Uh, maybe I'll put a link below about how the fastest train today actually floats in midair. That's right. It floats in midair. The fastest train today it goes 361 miles in the air. And what happens is I guess the magnets are keeping it above the ground and the magnets are also pushing it forward. So, that's freaking awesome. I mean, that's pretty cool. And it, it, it's kind of, I'll definitely include the video. I thought it's just a fun fact. So, you know, the future can go 250. We can already go 360. So suck it, future. You know, well, you have nothing on us. You know, what, what, what are you doing, son? I mean, come on. Anyway, um, I learned about in the Hunger Games that the environment, uh, I, okay, so let me, let me look too fast. So the Hunger Games, right? You know, that thing that happens every year. I guess the environment changes every year, and it's not just like some arena, one spot arena. So it could very well be near District 12 this time. You know that could be significant to the hiding the bows because Gail said, "Hey, you need to make, you need to find a bow and make a bow." But she was like, "Oh, I don't know. Sometimes there isn't." So I have a feeling that maybe it is in the woods. I don't know though. I would, I would think so. Maybe. So. Some history about the Hunger Games. I guess one time they gave all the kids spiked maces as weapons so they could blood bludgeon each other. 
with them to death. So that's pretty cool. I'd love to see that. Kids just smacking each other with, you know, maces. Reminds me of an anime I once I once watched. Um, <laughs> maybe I'll include a link below of what I'm talking about. <laughs> I actually don't recommend clicking on it though if I do put it in there because it's very very gory. Um, so anyway, and then I guess one there there there's desert landscapes. There's like blizzard landscapes. So there's a bunch of different landscapes. So that's pretty cool that they do that. Uh, again, I think it's already going to be a forest one, obviously. Um, I think I learned about this girl that won the Hunger Games before. Her name was like Jonah Mason. And she used she, she used that crybaby tactic that Katniss thinks PETA did to win. And she basically, she had this strategy that she just let everyone else kill each other. Because you know, they left her for last because she's like, oh, she's fodder. Who cares about her? But then when most of the strong opponents killed each other, she was left and she just murdered all the other ones. I think that's a very interesting strategy. I think that if I was in the Hunger Games, I'll actually look into what I would do. But I, I think that's a pretty decent strategy if you wanted to win. You know, just let everyone, everyone else take out each other and then you just be the last one left. But I guess a lot of other people would be thinking that. So they would kind of hunt them down. Um, okay, so what else? You know what? That's it. Holy shit. Um, this is actually going to be a short video. Not Now I'm going to rant about something. Um, let me talk about what... And I, I wanna, I'm not really asking you, but I want you to ask yourself, you know, what would you do if you found out that, you know, you were going to go off to the Hunger Games and you were going to die? You know, what, who would you see? If you had one hour left to go see who you loved, who would you see? And what would you bring with you? You know, in a, you know, minus, you know, weapons and shit. But, you know, what would you bring with you to maybe remind you of home? You know, like uh, Mage gave Katniss that pin. And also, um, you know, what, what would be your feelings? You know, would you be sad? Would you be scared? Would you be angry? Would you try and play it cool and be an you know, a sociopath like Katniss, you know, what would be your strategy? For me, if I had an hour left, I'd probably use that hour to try and escape. But if I couldn't escape, but I would probably just, you know, say goodbye to, you know, my loved one. <laughs> and uh, and then I would also probably bring nothing. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't really have anything I would bring that would remind me of home. I'd probably like, mm, I don't know. See, I, I don't like answering questions like this. It's too much pressure, okay? So anyway, you know, ask yourself those questions and maybe, you know, leave an answer to them. I doubt you will, though. Uh, anyway, so anyway, that's it. Uh, goodbye. Oh, yes, and look forward to the um, the next part, which is going to have some actually predictions about the movie and maybe some cool things about that. So, yes, look forward to that.